Let's get serious here. I am a professional troll of the highest order. There's no question about that. <laughs> my goal to troll is to help people. All right, that's my my highest drive in life is to contribute. If I don't, if I feel like I'm not contributing in a situation, I feel totally worthless in that situation. You know, just before there's a beetle on the ground there, and I could tell it was really weak, and it's like, you know, it's just trying to get outside. And I'm like, oh, wow, the beetle's trying to get outside. Open the door, put the beetle on the balcony, fly away. I've got a sense of fulfillment there because I'm contributing to the beetle. When I make a video about Greg uh, Duceta, Dushade, whatever I've been calling him, Greg, Coach Greg, let's call him Coach Greg. Um, don't hate the guy at all. Now, I've had a lot of messages, nye, nye, nye. some of Greg's teenage virgin fans and get into it. I understand the banter, I don't take it personally. But I understand I'm not trying to attack Greg, I'm just sharing a debate here about the information he's sharing. Calories in, calories out. There's more to the story, all right? So my goal here is to contribute. People are saying, oh, you're trying to clout chase off Greg. He does the same. You know, Greg's got fame on the internet because he clout chases, critiques, debates, other people's natty status, etc. You know, that's what we do. I've been I'm the original natty or not guy from 2010, all right? So, what's good to take twin muscle work, etc. So that's, you know, I started the natty or not YouTube community, whatever you want to call it. But does that mean much? Not really. I'm just saying that I was here first, blah, blah, blah. Clout chasing, it is, for sure. I'm not denying that. But it's clout chasing for me as to show kids out there, hey, if you're going to use anabolics, fair enough. Don't recommend it, blah, 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 blah. I've used them, I use them, etc. This is the truth, all right? This is the truth, not the half truth, not the three-quarter truth, the truth about diet training, etc. cetera. Uh, a lot of people can't handle that, and that's okay. I'm not here to baby people. I'm here to give you what you need to hear versus what you want to hear. So, right? so when I'm critiquing Greg, it's not just pure clout. It's to contribute. A, that's the foundation right there. I want to contribute. I want to see young men and women and anyone, actually, who's interested in health and fitness or aesthetics or whatever, who's chasing a goal, I don't wanna see people in pain unnecessarily, all right? Pain's for training, it's not for your head or your heart, okay? Greg says, and let's get into it. Again, no hate to Greg. I think Greg's a cool guy, you know? He's got a lot of great things to share. I can see what he's caught up in and stuff like that. So this is nothing personal about Greg at all as a human. This is 100%, I mean, it's banter and all that, you know, <laughs> this is you know, troll stuff, but honestly, I'm here to help, all right? So let's listen up. Let's go with calories in, calories out. Calories ain't calories, but calories are calories. You know, one gram of fat, nine calories. One gram of protein, four calories. One gram of carbs, four calories, all right? But we know that it's, if you eat a 3,000 calorie diet, I've got some foods here. This is some vegan, I'm a vegan, I've been vegan for 20 years, um, you know. This uh, is about 10 grams of fat per, per tub and there's about 400 and, uh, 420 calories in there. Is that right? Yep, 430 calories. So if I'm eating, you know, this as 4,000 calories a day, that's I mean, this is all meat, I'm gonna eat 4,000 calories a day of this. I'm gonna look exactly different since I'm eating 4,000 calories a day of KFC vegan chips. In Australia, the chips are vegan, right? The chicken's not vegan, but the chips are vegan. But these are reasonably fatty. I don't know the exact macros, but I know if I eat these consistently, my abs start to disappear. My skin on my scalp gets oily, my itchy, it gets sensitive, my skin's different, everything's different, all right? It's the fat, it's the oil. But I can eat 4,000 calories out of KFC chips and 4,000 calories out of this, I'm gonna look different, vastly different over long term. Now, then I get 4,000 calories of edamame and nante, I'm gonna look different as well. You know, there's only, uh, there's how many fats in here? Not that much fat in here per hundred grams, four grams of fat per hundred. So again, it's pretty lean food. It's got a lot of protein in there. So if you're eating 4,000 calories out of this, your kidneys are gonna be really getting overworked. I'd say it'd be, you know, semi-dangerous to do that long term. That much protein every day. I mean, joy, how much, you only like 400 grams, 500 grams of protein a day. I don't think that's good for renal function. I could be wrong, that's just my opinion. Um, now we, then we have my traditional diet, the Duran Rider Protocol is fruit, huge fruit fan here, sweet fruit, mangoes, bananas, blueberries, jackfruit, you know, papaya, pawpaws, persimmons, mangosteens, gramachama, lychee, rambutan, 
strawberries, all the berries, pears, apples, apricots, peaches, nectarines, right on and on. You could freestyle that. And then fruit's my number one thing. I'm a fruit, like I have to have fruit every day. I'm sweet, I got a mad sweet tooth. All right? And everyone does pretty much. <laughs> and there's, there's two, people, two people out there. One who are claiming they don't, and people who do. Everyone's got a sweet tooth. Right? And just for the record, I'm not in any stims in this video. This is just me getting hyped up to contribute and share. Not that I don't use stims, I definitely do. I'm just saying right now, we're full nerdy bright here. And so, my protocol, fruit, breakfast, fruit, as much as you want, add in some sugar if the fruit's not sweet enough. It's hard to get quality fruit that really tastes like, wow, everybody's had fruit. I mean, I hope everybody's had fruit that you remember, you put into the apple or that mango or that lychee and you're like, wow, this, what's, wow. It imprints in your head. I can remember mangoes from 2005, December, when I cycled from Byron Bay up to Keynes, Cape Tribulation, North Finals, Queensland. And I found this abandoned mango farm, grass was like, you know, knee high, and all these mangoes just dripping off the trees, you know, and they were like the best mangoes I've ever had. It was insane. And I remember that 16 years ago, almost, to the day. Like, as it was, sorry, as it was yesterday or today, it was just imprinted in your head. That's quality fruit. That's extremely rare. You know what I mean? That's how good it was. All right? So that's fruit. Most people buy fruit. It's not, like, you don't remember it. It's like, oh, yeah, I had some fruit yesterday. It was, it was all right. So, you know, fortunately, we live in a world where fruit's picked super green. It's low sugar. Despite, oh, sugar's full of fruits. Fruit's, fruit's, fruit's full of sugar. It's like. People are right, they got no idea. And it's, it makes me feel sad. I'm not like, you got no idea in a condescending way. I'm just like, man, you've got no idea of the magic of fruit out there that I wish everybody could experience. That level of fruit is like, you know, 20 to 30 or 40 bricks value, just off the chart, mind blowing fruit. All right. Snorting here. Um, so, yeah, fruit, big one for me. Um, the next one would be refined sugars. I'm a huge fan of sucrose, which is found in fruit. Fruit naturally occurring contains, uh, fruit naturally contains sucrose. It's in the fruit itself, right? It's in the sugar cane. It's in the sweet potato. It's in the peas and the corn and the and lentils. A lot of fr uh, plant foods contain sucrose, aka sugar, beetroots, etc. Have it. The cane, the grass, cane, cane. So whether you get sucrose from cane or sucrose from sweet potato or lentils, or bananas, or, you know, refined white table sugar, it's still sucrose, the same carbon bonds, the atoms, it's still sucrose, all right, just like if you, you know, if you consume, if someone puts arsenic, you know, in your food, it doesn't matter if it's arsenic in the water, or in the food, like, that's going into your bloodstream, and bad into your brain, all right, so when people say, oh, like, sugar's good in fruit, because it's naturally occurring, but table sugar's bad, because it's man-made, no, it's not, the sucrose on the table is plant derived. It's nature made. Right? Nature made that. Right? It goes through. You get the cane. Yeah, I've been on cane fields. I've slept on cane fields. I've stayed on cane fields. Right, I've been through the the tour of the cane sugar cane factory. They cut the cane, press it, heat it, evaporate the water. Poof, you got sugar. You know, spin it a few times. A big centrifuge with a uh, carbon filter. Remove the the browns or the blacks or the impurities, whatever they call it. And you got white crystalline sucrose there. That's, you know, it's the same thing that's in the cane that's in the fruit. It's just extracted from it, refined, processed. Now, protein powder is okay, isn't it? I don't, I don't do refined fruits. Protein powder? Yeah. You know, it's, it's so funny. There's influencers out there. We'll go off a tangent for a sec. There's influencers out there who go, I don't do refined foods. Refined sugar? No. 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 No refined sugar. No refined foods. And they're selling you protein powder. The vegans or the meat, or whatever, you know what I mean? It's like, the contradiction's insane. Um, that's why people who follow their advice can never get the results. Name me one person, Greg, do, Coach Greg is coached, one person who's got a physique or results as good as him. You can't name me one person from his zero, zero, <laughs> zero. Zero! Unless you're taking as much anabolics as Greg's taken for as long as he's been taking and training hard, zero people are gonna surpass his results. Now, my protocol, my ebooks from DuranRod.com, if I give it a little shout there, 
carb the F up and do not as anybody Bible. There's been a lot of people who have got way more YouTube subscribers than I do that I've coached from day one. You know, one girl's got almost 4 million subscribers now on her channel. And that's a girl who's a woman, I should say. You know, she's staying with a little girl as well. She's a female, she's a person, she's a human. She stayed with me, you know, and had like a 50 subscribers or whatever. Now she's over 4 million. She used my protocol making bank and try to transform her life and physique and mind, etc. cetera, right? Both good and bad ways, and et cetera. I'm just saying that my protocol works. I've got people with 150 kilos down to 75 kilos and kicking ass, loving it, all right? So my coaching is with YouTube success, career-wise, it's fitness-wise. There's plenty of guys and girls out there. Well, not many girls. There's a few girls who run faster than me. And, you know, a lot of guys who run, run and ride faster than me who've taken my advice and they're just kicking my ass up north and summer. And I'm just thinking, sometimes I'm thinking, man, why don't I just keep my mouth shut? I could be beating these people. I gave them the tips and now they're just destroying me. Damn, Harley. You don't need to, you know, when to shut up, boy. You know, and they're just riding off and I'm just like, man, you know, should have said, stick it in the big ring and grind it 50 cadence, you know, like, oh, it was good for you, I should have said. So, you know, that's my reality, you know, and I feel proud. I feel like that's why they call me Daddy Drunider because I feel proud that I've helped these people who were just, you know, ground zero. I'm not saying in a bad way. I'm just saying they were ground zero, zero subs, basic fitness, and they've gone way past my trajectory. Just poof, that feels fantastic. And that's why I'm a way better coach than Greg. And I'm not saying that. That's a that's a banter statement there. That's like, Greg, step up. Show me one person you've coached who's got better results than you. Because I've got many. Runners, cyclists, weight loss testimonials, social media careers. You know, the same. And Greg, how much does Greg charge? 23000 bucks of coaching. I'm like, what am I charging on doingroll.com? 150 or whatever. Lifetime. The same. If you want the insane life transformation, I'm your man. Because I've done it. Experience. I don't just talk about it. I don't just use someone else's protocol or whatever. I use my protocol, the Dream Rider protocol, to transform your life. And that sounds so salesy and BS and cultish. And it is cultish, but it ain't BS. And it's the fact. You know, I, I just transform people. You could give me Tony Robbins. And me, you give me all the best coaches in the world, and I guarantee you, I'll transform that person's life more than any of those people. I'm not maybe as good a speaker or whatever, but I've got the template that just freaking works. Everyone's out there, cut your carbs, calories and calories out. Da -da 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 It's guaranteed to fail you in terms of your potential. My potential's my potential. Your potential might be a lot more than mine, or maybe it's not. Who knows? You know, I don't know what your niche is. I don't know you. But I guarantee you I can get you to your top level if you want to put the work in there and be consistent. Right? I'm not telling people just to go buy my coaching and one purchase. That's a, no, no, it's you putting in the work. It's one purchase for, me, for my end, but it's you putting in the work and staying true. It's just like if you want to make a hat, there's so many thousands of fibers are in here or this jacket. You've got to stitch it. Most people start with the collar. And just give up and go, oh, I've done this for like a week and I've got a collar, but where's my jacket? I'm giving up. This doesn't work. you got to go to the end, man. No, no, not the end because there is no end. you got to go until you got your goal reached and then you go, oh, I've got another goal and another goal. All right? In the meantime, you become a good person because you're just contributing back. You're paying it back. So I've helped a lot of people become millionaires, you know, or make, and people out there, probably more so people making, you know, 50, 100 grand a year, et cetera. They're very common. But I'll tell you what, it doesn't matter how much money you make, you know, never ever think that money will equate to happiness. Never ever think that when I make the money, when I have the fame or the verified tick or whatever, I'll be happy. That is definitely untrue. And I've definitely seen people's lives, you know, turned upside down, destroyed, less quality, because they thought that money, fame, happiness, aesthetics would give them the real joy. Uh, 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 uh. The joy comes from helping Mother Nature, from helping people who care about you, or people who don't even know you. The contribution, that's the drug. That's the drug. You can take as much farmer grade stuff as you want. You know, that'll give you a buzz or a vibe, but when you're at home, alone, or wherever, who, whoever you are, wherever, you know, who you are as a person, what you stand for, you know, how you're willing to help people help themselves, that's the drug. That's the fitness. That's the ascetic. Everything else, this is all transitional.
because anyone could die today. You're not guaranteed tomorrow. But your legacy you leave behind, how people had interactions with you, positive or negative, hopefully positive, that's what you leave behind. That's your legacy, all right? Just saying. Anyway, so what's this video, is this video about? <laughs> doing what's this video about? Cows in, cows out. Just give me the give me the deal, dude. All right, let's get back in the aesthetics world. Let's get back into the shallowness of aesthetics. I want to be ripped. I want to be lean. Let's get back into that because I know people love weight loss, um, and that's why you click on the weight loss, you know, niche because that's what people want, you know. And being a professional troll, I know people out there will go, I don't like that guy. Hang on, but he's lean. And I want to get a jawline and I want to, you know, look like a, a tapeworm with a, you know, you know, I want that, to, I want, I want, to, I just want to lean out. Most people are following Greg and myself because they want to lose weight. They want to lose weight, all right? And now I am obsessed with human metabolism. That's why I've been, you know, pharma grade anabolics totally change your metabolism. If you're taking, and I'm not recommending this, this is just my personal experience, my personal experimentation. So I'm not saying to go out and do this. If you want to gain weight, anabolics will make you gain weight. Anabolics don't make you shredded. They make you gain weight, muscle, bone, glycogen, water retention, nitrogen retention, whatever you want to call it. They make that anabolic means gain weight. Gain weight. People go, oh, you're shredded. You got abs during it because you're taking anabolics. No, if you look at before I started taking anabolics, which is 2014, started experimenting there. I had I was lean as, you know, I was leaner than I am now. I was lighter and leaner. Anabolics add weight. I've got more muscle on me. I've got about 10 kilos extra muscle slash bone slash blood slash fluid slash tissue. Okay. Extra weight, anabolics, anabolics. Now, if you take a milligram a day of testosterone, you know, as a man, you there will be some cellular changes, but you're not really going to notice it weight-wise. If you're taking five milligrams a day, hmm, maybe there's a little change in the scale going up. And if you're taking 20 or 30 or 100 or whatever, the more anabolics in your system. Now, I'm not recommending, I'm just saying, this is the science out, this is the test they've done, my personal experience, everyone's experience on pharma grade anabolics, the higher the dose, the more the scales go up. That's why people who are overweight, they take anabolics, it's like, would you want to gain more weight? What's your goal? You know? That's why I'm a specialty from going obese to beast. Because my program is so catabolic that even me on anabolics, people would laugh and go, that guy takes steroids? He's 74 kilos and six foot. What a moron. Why would he take steroids? He's like, he's a twig, you know? So that's how catabolic my program is. And that's why all my girlfriends or people who come live with me or whatever, if they're fat, they become fit. If they're fit, they get fitter. That's just how it is. My program's catabolic. It's ca catabolic. So if you want to lose weight, I'm your guy. Now, the reason why I've been deviling in this, this whole anabolic, you know, pharmaceutical route, you know, is I got personal curiosities. I want to speak from personal experience. And if something's safe, I'm like, I'll try that. If it's not safe and risky, I'm like, eh, no thanks. You know, if, if I could jump in a car today and do 400K an hour with zero risk, I'm going to do it. But I wouldn't go jump in a car for 400K an hour because I know the risk of that. You know, I don't need to experience it. I'm like, mm, that's pretty risky. No thanks. I enjoy my life. I enjoy my life. I really enjoy my life. I don't want to die early. I, I love living. And so if there's things that are risky, I'm like, mm, nah, I'm good. Going downhill fast, done that heaps of times. I'm like, nah, I'm good now. I like my life too much to want to self-harm like that. I'm just like, I'm cool. I know the risks. I know a kangaroo could bounce out while I'm doing 80. Let's drop it on the 60 or 50 or wherever. So that's where I'm coming from. But calories in, calories out, you know, it's, people don't understand that. So we've got the, go back to this. Yeah, everyone knows it, man. If you're eating 3,000 calories a day of protocol of my foods, you're going to perform, look, smell, everything's going to be different. The more oil you eat, the more your scalp's affected. And if you've got like predisposition, like I've got more hair at my age than my dad had, all right? Eating more oils, though, that's going to attack the hair on your scalp. You might experience uh, acceleration 
of male pat baldness, which is fine. It's just cosmetic, you know. Some people are really attached to their hair and stuff like that. I get it, you know. But hair is very, very genetic, okay. So the more oil you eat, the more hair loss you'll experience, if that's your genetics. All right? Some people just don't have that. But oil, all right. So that's what people don't even understand. Like the, the skin is affected by the fats you eat, Affect especially oil. Have Go out there now. Get some fries, crisps, vegan stuff, what anything. Oily food, eat it. Chocolate, ideally something that's like, you know, overtly greasy. Chocolate's greasy, but it's a little bit different. And then feel your skin on your face, you know, on your back of your neck, on your shoulders, about 10 minutes after. I mean, you might have oily skin right now because you ain't ever had oil from dinner last night or just lunch. But try and do that. Seven days of no oily foods, no fatty foods, and then have something oily, and you'll notice... Your skin's like, oh, it's greasy. It's like, wow, it's like slippery. If I'm in a wrestling ring, I must just slip off people. Can't get any traction. In your scalp, you know. I remember last year I was smashing these because they were $2 a pack. And my scalp smelled like canola oil. And Tasha's like, wow, it's like, wow, it's crazy, you know. And I experienced like accelerated uh, loss of hair, you know. Because my scalp was just getting so itchy. I'm just like, oh, my God, you know. So oil definitely contributes to male pattern baldness, if that's in your genetics. So if you want to know that, just look at your dad, and or your brothers or whatever, and then you'll know. Assuming they're you, you know, 100% brothers. There's nothing wrong with them not. I'm just saying, this is, we're talking metabolically speaking. So calories not calories, man. That is just the biggest myth when it comes to metabolism. Now if, you, now, if I'm taking anabolics, then my weight's gonna go up on 3,000 calories a day. Let's just use that as a standard baseline here. If I'm in 3,000 calories a day for a year, everything else is the same. My digestion is the same, sleep, training, input, output, everything's the same. And then I start adding in 50 milligram a week test, 100 milligram, 150, 140, 250, 700, Rich Piano, you know, 1 cc, Boyston Lloyd, we're doing 3 cc a week. I'm in 3,000 calories a day. You think my weight's gonna stay exactly the same? Hypothetically, let's say I'm at 65 kilos natty. And I'm taking now. I'm taking tests at varying titrates of dosages. Is my weight going to stay the same? No, it's not. So any little Greg Duchet person out there saying calories in, calories out, doesn't matter. Watch you where the food comes from. It's all the same. It's all the same. Calories the calorie. No, it's not when it comes to weight loss or weight gain. It's not. All right. The fat you eat is the fat you wear. It'll change your skin. It'll change your mindset. Be more brain foggy. Fat, dietary fat over 20 grams a day will increase your insulin resistance, which means the fat you're eating over 20 grams a day, varies from person to person, but I'd say about 20, you know, for a sedentary person. Over 20 grams of fat a day for an adult, sedentary person, meaning you use a remote control versus get up and touch TV, or you take the stairs, or you drive a car, or ride a bike, sedentary person, you're gonna experience some insulin resistance because the fat is called an insulin receptor site. And now, your body's like, hey, the sugar's going up, blood sugar's going up, we're going to put more insulin to try and push it in the cell because our cells are going, hey, there's 30 trillion of us. We all run on sugar. Where's the sugar, dude? We're all like, where's the sugar? We're running late. We've got shit to do here. Where's the sugar? And insulin's like, oh, oh, this, oh we've got to do more insulin. Pancreas is like, push more insulin out. And then your fast insulin's going up. Insulin, what's insulin? Anabolic hormone. More. Some people say more anabolic than um, testosterone. I've never used insulin. I can't vouch for that, it's pretty dangerous for a common bodybuilding scene. Don't recommend it. People are dying from insulin use, um, bodybuilders, etc. you know. So insulin's very anabolic, okay? So then the more fast insulin levels you got, boom, your weight's gonna go up. Three, calories aren't calories, 3,000 calories of KFC, and the same 3,000 calories of fruit. It ain't the same, it ain't the same. Greg Duchet says it's the same. Oh no, it doesn't. It, no, it, Greg says eat healthy. Yeah, Greg does, but what does healthy even mean? Greg's foods, what he says is healthy, I disagree. And he might disagree with what I think is healthy. So using the word healthy, that's like using the word bicycle. Like, what does a bicycle mean? For some people, a bicycle is like a model bicycle. For me, it's like a high quality bike that makes you inspired to ride that thing. That's a bicycle. Properly tuned, etc. So it's very subjective. Greg says they're healthy, like, what does that mean? So I'm trying to be objective. What's the difference between objective and subjective? Objective's like, I'm wearing a specialized jacket made in China, you know, bought from a local bike store, has black sleeves, red, white pinstripes, it's a size medium or a size small, whatever, 
you know, I'm six foot tall, 74 kilos. That's subjective. Subjective is like, I'm wearing a jacket today. I'm wearing clothing today. What clothing are you wearing? You know, very subjective. Healthy, eat healthy. That's very subjective. Calories in, calories out. Very subjective. I eat 3,000 calories a day from fruit, sugar, rice, white rice, steamed, avoid the oils. That's subjective. I eat 3,000 calories a day from food. What do you eat? It could be anything. I eat healthy. You know what I mean? It's very vague. Most coaches out there are super, super vague. Super, super vague. Right. And people love vagueness. I don't know why, because it's a mystery or whatever. People love vagueness. Calories in, calories out. You know, just do it. Do what? <laughs> um, so you can't measure how many calories you're consuming accurately every meal, every day, unless your diet is oil, refined sugar, and refined protein powder. Because we know, you know, that those calories in oil, we know that's pure fat, nine calories per gram. We know that sugar is pure sugar, four calories per gram, and the protein. If you're talking how many calories in a banana, how ripe is it? How big is it? You know, how much water is in it? Is it a bit dehydrated? There's so many variables there. How much is in your your, your dead animal burger or whatever? Like, it varies all the time. And then that's the calories in the food. But what about how many calories do you digest? Or you, if you've got irritable bowel and you just crap it out, you know what I mean? So nobody can tell you exactly how many calories a day you're consuming or how many you need, unless you've got just refined sugar, you know, salt, uh, sorry, refined sugar, fats, and proteins. That's your diet, which is no one's doing. Don't recommend that because various reasons. Um, you know what I mean? So you can't say, oh, I, I'm in a 500 calorie a day deficit. How do you even know that? Because you don't know how much in the food to, to, to a, you know, 100%, just ballpark maybe. And you don't know how many calories a day you digest. So you don't know how much is in the food, we don't know how much we digest, and we don't know how much we burn that day. We don't know. We don't know. I'm gonna burn more calories sitting on this sofa doing this video than I would be if I'm like, aren't I? But I'm sitting on the sofa. So that's the deal. So when people say I'm, you know, I'm on a 100 calorie day cut, I'm just like, what? That's so BS, man. You don't know that, it's so vague. But people love those numbers because that's a, that's a certainty. And in, we live in a world of so much uncertainty. People want certain. They crab onto it. You give me exact program. I eat this, 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 and that. In you know, this portions, do this. How many hours do they have exercise hardly for losing weight? I'm like, it depends what your goal is, man, and what your fitness level is, and what your your lifestyle is like. What, what are your hormones? What's your hemoglobin like? What's your testosterone like? You're doing too much. You're going to tank those things and feel crap and burn out. And your TSH levels are going to go up, and you become a weight gainer. Thyroid hormone, man, that's huge. People, TSH. Always check TSH before you do any sort of diet or, you know, if you're doing low carb, cutting your carbs, your TSH is going to go up, which is going to make you long term a weight storer in a bad way because you'll be like, thumpy and thumpy, I don't feel motivated, I'm not horny, blah, 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 you know, we want people in our lives with energy and passion, right? It doesn't matter how you look, if you don't have energy and passion, it's like, oh man, blah, 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 blah. What's going on here? It's like a car doesn't, Porsche doesn't start. You're like, oh my God, that's a Porsche. Sick, bro, Ferrari, bro, yeah. And you put your key in the ignition and it's like, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, oh, and then you're sitting in this Porsche going, hey guys, hey, does that car work? No, it doesn't, it looks cool. You know what I mean? Well, that guy's really hot, that girl's really hot. Wow, well, cool, but are they good to be around? Uh, they're very moody and up and down and temperamental because they're undercarbed and freaking out and over-caffeinated. But yeah, they look good. Who wants to be on that, man? Been there, done that, ain't worth it, life's short. Not everyone wakes up tomorrow, understand that. So that's the deal, so you don't have any calories a day, you're consuming, burning, digesting. So I don't recommend counting calories in the mindset of like, well, I can only eat this, and blah, 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 blah. I recommend counting fat macros. Again, it's gonna be ballpark, you know, because we don't know exactly how much fat's in everything we eat, but what I tell people, is if your goal is weight loss, do your best to avoid foods with oil, meaning these bad boys, and eat foods like potatoes, which is, there's potatoes in here, there's oil as well, so, sorry, Colonel. Um, and yeah, eat things with as minimal fat as possible, all right? Avoid the oil, avoid the animal. Now, a lot of animal products don't have much oil or fat in there, but they've got, you know, other things that aren't the best for your health, and, you know, the environment, etc., and the ethical. We can, that's the whole. Diff, that's a different debate today. We're talking about weight loss. I'm just saying, if your goal is weight, ditching the oil, ditching the animal, ditching the nuts and seeds. They're very fatty. 
Did anyone get obesity, nuts and seeds? No, because that's pretty limiting, but they do cause insulin resistance, all right? So if your goal is to maximize your weight loss, maximize your catabolic effect, cut out nuts and seeds. If you have one bazil nut a day, is that gonna destroy your plans? No. So if you wanna have one bazil nut a day, then do <laughs> that, I'm just saying in general, cut them out. You don't need them. You know, if you've got excess body fat, you've got excess body fat. Why eat more fat? Oh, but healthy fats though. Yeah, healthy fats, but you've got enough healthy fat in your body. I mean, I could be wrong, but you're watching this video for weight loss, so you're watching 30 minutes in. Bam, we ramble for 30 minutes. Um, you know, if you've got, if you feel you've got enough healthy fat on your body, if you pinch your little chubby cheeks and your little tubby tub neck and your little bit, 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 if you're pinching that and you're like, well, I've got enough healthy fat on me, you can ask someone on the street, hey, do I have enough healthy fat on my body? And if they're looking at you like, <laughs> you've got enough healthy fat for an entire village, bro, <laughs> you're, you're good. Then you can cut your healthy fats, all right? Because you've got enough healthy fat in your body. And hey, I'm just being funny here. It doesn't matter if you're, you're obese or whatever in terms of like who you are as a person. Obviously, not good for your health. But if you're not happy obese, you won't be happy when you're fit, etc. In terms of like with how you look, etc. Because you'll always be picking at something. Except who you are now today. Very important. Because right? if you can't handle yourself now, you won't be able to handle yourself later on. You won't. Because aesthetics comes and goes and different beliefs and changes and you put work in your body and someone will cut you down because they're like, oh, do you even do legs? Or yeah, they're, 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 you know, like, you do steroids, you look, you look like your lip, bro. You know, someone will just cut into you and you'll be like, oh. So if you don't have that emotional muscle, all this aesthetic crap, and mean jack, because you'll just be getting cut into there and you'll be like the best looking person in the room who's the most insecure and crying inside. But outside, you might look amazing to others, but inside, you are falling apart because you don't have that emotional muscle because you put all this emphasis on outside appearances, which is fine and normal, but ain't gonna make you have a happy life. All right? So this is my little message here. Accept yourself where you are today. If you can't accept you know, fat arms or muscular arms or twiggy arms or no arms or whatever, then you, know, you won't be accepting other things that are gonna happen in your life because the universe is always teaching us. Some people say God is always speaking to us. I said the universe is always speaking to us, always giving us lessons. So if we don't learn the lessons, it keeps getting louder and louder and louder. And your life quality is going down, 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 down. Okay, all right, so yeah. Calories in, calories out. We like to go deep on this one. It ain't that simple, but it is that simple. <laughs> the fat you eat is the fat you wear. You have to be in a mad deficit to be uh, burning off all the extra fat you're eating. Now fat is stored as fat. People say, oh, but you can eat sugar and carbs because you're burning off all that energy on your bicycle, Harley. You're a bicyclist. You ride all day. And no, I don't. If I rode all day, I'd be like, you know, 20 kilos. <laughs> I've done a lot of Ks over the last 20 years. I'm a consistent cyclist, but I don't ride all day. You can follow me on Strava. All my training last 12 years up there. All right, So a lot of cyclists are like, man, Dan, you're lean, bro. You train not much compared to me. How are you so lean? And I'm like, bro, I don't eat the fat you eat. I'm saying it's a nice way. I don't eat the fat grams every day you eat. And I don't starve my carbs. So my thyroid is healthy because I don't starve my carbs. If I want carbs, I eat them as much as I want whenever I want. If I want sleep, I get a nap, I lay down. If I'm tired, I don't have stimulants. I have stims when I'm up. I don't have stims when I'm down and tired. I have rest. All right? If my eyes are bugged out, I don't have any stims. That's the dumbest thing ever. I mean, maybe a 24 hour race, okay. Very rare exception. I haven't done one of those for like 10 years. But if you, if you need rest, have rest, all right? And then you'll be much more of a nice person to be around. If you're taking stims to pay attention and because you're so tired, you're like, oh man, you're gonna have a mad mood swing, all right? So pff, careful on the stims. Stims, cocaine, green tea, matcha, you know, cacao, theobromine, caffeine, the adderals, the dextroamphetamines, the methylphenidates, the modafinils, the probiotics, whatever you want to call it. Stimulants, central nervous stimulants. They're all, to a degree, neurotoxic, all right? Just saying. So there may be a place for some people in their lives for them. Otherwise, I'd say cut them out for quite a while just to rebalance and recenter things, especially if you've got any anxiety or whatever. Get rid of the stims, cut them out, all right? Because stims create this anxiety roller coaster where you're overthinking things 
the human brain's naturally going to overthink things. Anxiety is normal to have. If you didn't have anxiety, you'd walk through the jungle and go, oh, little tiger, oh, little chinny, 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 little scratchy, little chop, chop, chops, you know, little whiskers. And the tiger's just gonna go, Phew! and eat you, and you'd be like, oh, damn. That pretty cat weren't friendly, you know? That anxiety keeps you alive. You want to have anxiety. Taking any anxiety medication, I don't recommend that. I recommend cutting out the stims. How many people have I met in the last 24 years of being a professional coach? and personal coach, starting with friends and going up to the professional level. How many people I've met with overt anxiety issues who didn't smoke cigarettes, who didn't use caffeine or stimulants, who had overt anxiety? I think maybe two people, and they were young women. Two people, I reckon. And maybe they lied to me, maybe they were drinking coffee or something behind the scenes, who knows? But there's two people I'm gonna say, I would say that have had anxiety that calm down once they realize anxiety is normal and accelerate anxiety is just like a choice and often triggered by caffeine and nicotine, etc. You know what I mean? To pull out the stims, you're good to go. That's what I mean. 3,000 calories a day, does that include stimulants? Because your mind and mood and recovery is going to be all over the shop. You can't get deep sleep, if you, your deepest sleep, if you're having stimulants every day. Chocolate, Coca-Cola, cocaine, green tea, whatever. If you're having it every single day, you can't get your deepest sleep. Every sleep expert will agree with me on that one. Whether they hate my guts or think I'm a clown or not, they all agree on that. When they say they're like heavily addicted to the stimulants, you go, there's nothing wrong with the stims, mate. I have my coffee, I was cold, I'm healthy, mate. Huh? So yeah, all right. So there's a place for stims. They can be good fun. They can be beneficial for certain performances or getting stuff done, but use them respectfully. Use them with a mature mindset. Use them with a conscious choice. And use the smallest amount you can get away with versus yeah, but like take the little bit and see what happens. And then maybe a little bit more, a little bit more. And versus just like chug it in and just give your adrenals a king hit. What are you doing? You know, it's like going to the gym and just putting you know two hundred kilos in the squat rack. Oh my back, my back down, man! I'm gonna snap city. <laughs> so what are you doing? Start with just the bar. Start with body weight, and then a little backpack with a pillow in it, and then you know over the time increase it. Anyway, that's the deal. Calories and calories out. I disagree with Greg, Coach Greg on that one, strongly. And I've just given you a 37-minute ADD, manic bipolar rant of why I disagree with Greg on the calories and calories out. And that's just not Greg. I disagree with anyone who says calories in, calories out. Eat less, move more. That will work for weight loss. But your mood goes to shit eventually, if not that day. Your TSH, if you're cutting your carbs, is gonna go right up. Your thyroid stimulant hormone is gonna go right up as T3, T4 production goes down. It'll cascade down. That's your body's way of saying, hey, we're in a famine, a carbohydrate famine. We gotta slow down. We're gonna store more weight. Well, yeah, we're gonna lose weight initially. People go, hey, Darren Ida, calories in, calories out. How do you like that? It's working. I lost the pounds, blah, 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 blah. And they're like flying like Icarus up here. And they're getting close and close to that calories in, calories out sun, which is Greg Duchesne's smiling face. And then they hit that sun that wax off their feather shoes, melts, and they go crashing into the ocean, they drown. We never hear from them again on social media. And that, all we hear is that little Icarus voice. Cows and cows are out, I'm doing great, this is great. And they crash in the ocean, never to be seen again, or seen on the, washed up on the whale, Greenpeace pulling them up. You know, they start off as a, a lean, got to a lean bean, and then become a, a beached whale, Greenpeace, and the captain of the, the, the Nishin Maru, you know, about to harpoon them. And Greenpeace saying, no, that, that, that's not a whale. You know, shouldn't happen in Wales anyway. That's just the person who carries and carries out for 10 years and they gain, you know, 100 odd kilos or whatever, or 50 kilos in a small frame. Just saying, that's what happens, all right? Everyone knows the girl or guy who did calories and calories out, looked hot, looked great, got all the attention. And then a year later you see him, or six months later you see him, or five years later then you see him, and they're like, did they eat that person? And not making fun, I'm just saying, you know? That's how it happens, calories and calories out. Damages the thyroid. And sustainable. Okay, doing. I'll just do it for a little bit, short term, and then, and then I'll, you know, I'll, 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 I'll stop. Yeah, but you're doing the thyroid damage. Okay, I'll take thyroid meds. Oh my god, what are you doing? You are taking thyroid meds now? Like the side effects and like what? Just eat low fat, unlimited carbs, and go through it long term. Adaptive thermogenesis or not, right? That's the only way you're gonna live your best life, man. And man, manlets and man girls out there, it's the only way you're gonna live your best life. 
unlimited carbs, unlimited rest. Oh, I've got kids doing that, I can't do that. Well, what are you gonna do for the kids? You're gonna be a parent who's just like on edge all the time? Your kids don't need extra toys and money and a fancy house, your kids need time and a parent who's stable and emotionally there for them, present. If you're not, society will be, and often in society, they ain't good. So I'm just saying, this is a whole revolutionary statement here, I'm saying, more sleep, not more sleep, enough sleep, enough rest, enough carbs, enough water. You've got enough fat in your body, unless you're seriously going to wait. In that case, get more fat in there. You know, it's, you know, it's, anyway, that's the deal. If you've got any questions, we can do a follow-up on this one. That's the rant, that's the rave, that's me, 24 years of experience, no script, no jump cuts, just hitting it up. And imagine if I was getting questions. I could even I could talk for 50 hours in this one. Actually, I need sleep breaks in between. <laughs> Maybe be another more what? But um, that's the reality, man. You know, that's the reality. You know, here I am on D ball and test, and I look like I've never even been to the gym. You know, it's like I was, that's why I have to laugh loudly when people say cars make you fit, cows you cows fit. I'm just like, man, if you only knew my reality, coaching thousands of people, I've seen everything. I haven't seen everything. There's got to be more out there. But I've seen most things when it comes to weight loss and the transformations and the people going from like this to that. I'm just like, damn. It's, I love it because I have a genuine passion and genuine curiosity. I don't know where it comes from. Maybe from reading diet books in my mum's bookshelf in the 80s. Because I've got nothing else to read and we had no TV. Or I wasn't allowed. My mum would pull the TV cable out the back. So I'm just like, what am I going to do? I'm bored. There's no internet. There's no video games. There's books. I'm going to read books. And this book's boring as heck, but I've got nothing else to do. So I'm going to it outside because it's cold outside. And I might get asthma or something. You know? So I'm just reading these Leslie Kenton diet books and all this stuff. And I guess that planted the seed. And my mum, my mum was doing the, the yo-yo diets. You know, She was like every woman out there, maybe most men out there, dieting. And I'm going to get slim because of my sexual market value. And blah, 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 blah. blah SMV. And blah, blah, blah. You know? So it's like, that's part of the deal. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, I mean, you're in a wrong, put you in a wrong destination you don't want to be in, but it's normal human social society driven behavior, ascetic focus, et cetera. We, you know, we want that. We, we women use their body as love bait to get some masculine presence of men they value and et cetera. And guys use their physique to get other men and other women. It's just, it's just human nature. I want to help people do it the right way that ends up in mental stability versus mental, <laughs> mental home. You know, I've seen people to go there and uh, it ain't fun. Getting put in a straight jacket, jab full of lithium. I don't know. Could be wrong, but I think there's better ways to live a life. That's my personal experiences. My personal opinion is based on personal experiences that I've had 24 years training thousands of people. Every day it's my personal obsession. This isn't my, I went to university, I read a book and I did an exam. This is my experiences. My knowledge is based on that. No, no, no. This is real life experience and nothing for me beats that. Nothing for me beats that. I would rather a surgeon, let's say how I had a, a broken bone, right? And I fell over, broke my bones. I fell 100 meters off a cliff and I'm vegan, so I'm super strong. All I did was broke my arm. And I've got a surgeon who's never been to university, but he works in Nigeria. He or she works in Nigeria and has done thousands of surgeries. Everyone raves about him. Like, yeah, my arm's better now. Never been, a, never been to university. Or I've got the top graduate from Harvard surgeon who's never done much surgeries in their life. Who am I going to go for? The surgeon with no tertiary education, but has raving reviews and just gets it done and can say, hey, I'm the best out there. This is proof. Or the surgeon's like, hey, I've got a fancy clinic, fancy car, you know, when I went to Harvard, but like, where's the results? Who am I going to go with? I'm going to go with the person in Nigeria working on the back of a hardware store table who's got the, the results. I want results, you know, and often people have results that you want, but they're lying to you how they got there. All right. So that can be very confusing as well. Over as you get older and more, not older, but as you get more experienced, because age doesn't always mean experience. Experience means experience, not age. Age is correlated with experience. It's not causatory. All right. Experience is causatory to experience. Experiences give you experienced mindset. As you get more experienced, realize, realize, realize. Okay. Just think on that one. I get some more cards in me.